On a lone street in a darkening Gotham city, a cool wind rustles a few stray decomposing leaves as a jet black van zooms toward its location, the Gotham Museum. The van suddenly halts when the driver spots a police car up ahead, patrolling the area vigilantly. The driver waits a moment, keeping his eyes steadily on the sentry. Without any hesitation, the police car continues making its rounds on the block. Hey, uh, boss? Are, uh, are you sure about this? It, uh, it seems pretty foreboding having a cop in the area like that. Yeah, man. I don't want to go back to jail. I just got out. Then why'd you take this job, then? <laughs> Come on, man. You didn't waste any time getting back into the underworld. Not even a breather before going back to your old ways. Hey, rent ain't gonna pay itself, you know? Maybe we should get a move on? Yeah. Boss man ain't looking too happy right now. Your assessment would be correct. Now stop dilly-dallying and speed up. Y yes yes sir, right, right away sir. The van swiftly arrives at its destination, and the henchmen get to work instantly. I'll start up the Trojan Horse Protocol in the security system. Should be down right about now. Hey, that's less messier than a crowbar. As the goons and Mr. Freeze walk into the museum, they stop when they notice the night guard at his desk, but soon hear the sound of someone snoring and realize it is the night guard himself. Ooh. Here, I'll make sure they get a real nice sleep. Allow me. Enjoy your slumber. Indefinitely. Uh, hey, pal. Uh, I'm about to make some coffee. You... Hey! Freeze! If you insist. <laughs> Meanwhile, at King's Cafe in Diamond District, the place is packed with the rich dinner crowd as waiters and waitresses bustle about like a choreographed dance. At a table by the window, overlooking Old Gotham, with its shorter skyscrapers beginning to block the view of the lowering sun, sits Bruce Wayne and his girlfriend, District Attorney Rachel Dawes. A television on in the corner is currently tuned into GCN. I'm not even going to bother asking how the richest man in Gotham got us booked in this packed establishment on such short notice. Well, I do own the restaurant after all. Why am I not surprised? Good evening, Gotham. This is Jack Ryder from GCN. If you'll remember, last week the Flying Rodent did GCPD's job for them once again when he took down ex-District Attorney Harvey Dent, a dangerous psychopath. Just a few hours ago, he fought yet another dangerous supervillain, Condiment King. No, folks, I'm not making this one up. Our police force can't even handle a failed hot dog stand owner. Hey, that bat guy, or whatever you want to call him, Seems to be doing some good in preserving the city's safety, don't you think? Maybe, I don't know. I think you should just leave it to the police. It is their job to protect the city, so it seems a tad bit strange for a costumed vigilante to be running around in his underwear punching the crap out of evildoers. When you put it that way, it is a little strange. Anyways, how's work been? Any exciting cases? Well, for the most part, it's been pretty clear-cut recently, but we did get this one case where this guy claimed to have been hypnotized by a hat-wearing freak. There wasn't any convincing evidence to prove his claim, so he just got shipped off to Arkham. Arkham? Heard that place could get tense. It's not a pleasant place, no. Mayor's Hill's been trying to pass some legislation to reform it, but there haven't been enough supporters. This is a great date conversation, isn't it? Batman and an insane asylum. Not exactly romantic, but interesting. You got any better date topics, Mr. Romance Expert? Well, who suddenly notices a bright light in the close distance? Wait, is that the bat signal over there? Oh no, not while I'm on my date. <sighs> Quick, I have to think up a believable reason of why I have to go. Uh... I just remembered that I have a business meeting in 20 minutes? No, I've used that one too much already. If only I had some sort of decoy. She's too smart for that, though. 
I could get Alfred to call me and ask to see me right away. That should do the trick. Well, here it goes. Oh crap, it's my boss. He says that important new information has been found. And he needs me there right away. I understand. Well, if that's not convenient, I don't know what is. I'm so sorry. I'll make it up to you, I promise. Don't worry. I know how important work can be. I'll cover the bill as a start. No need. I'll take care of it. Go handle that case. I'll call you. Looking forward to it. Bruce patiently waits for Rachel to leave the cafe. Once the coast is clear, Bruce makes his departure. Back at the museum, Mr. Freeze and his men work on the vault door holding their prize, the Arctic Diamond. One man currently uses a blowtorch on the lock, but things are progressing slowly. Out of the way! <laughs> Quickly, get the diamond! We do not have time to waste! My Nora needs that cure! Yeah, we won't let you down, boss. Don't worry about it. Yeah! Right in the arm! Up to your old tricks again, eh, Victor? Nice of you to join us, dynamic duo. But your timing is off, as the diamond will be mine in only a moment. Not where we stand. You both must understand what it is like losing someone. Let me play out my task, and you will never have to deal with me again. Let me save my Nora. This isn't right, Victor, and you know it. Nothing will get in the way of reviving my special one. Nora, she's my whole world. She means everything to me. I'll do what I must. But before I go, I leave you with a test, Batman. You can take me down and drag me to the GCPD. Or you can save your dear sidekick. There isn't time for both, Batman. Now, choose. Batman doesn't give the problem a second thought, as he already has chosen what to do. Batman takes out a thermal device and begins to melt away at the ice. Why did he have to freeze me? Are you alright? <sighs> yeah, I'll live. In the Bat Cave, a shivering Dick Grayson sits with his feet in a warm bucket of water, enjoying the steam lifting from it. While Dick warms himself up from his cold encounter, he looks through old files on Mr. Freeze. Can I offer you a nice hot chocolate, Master Grayson? That'd be great. Thanks, Al. Perfect cure for battling the cold. It sure is. Anything else I can assist you with, sir? No, that'll be all. Thank you. Very well, sir. Sorry if you mind me asking, sir, but what was it like being frozen alive? Since I can't say that I've ever been in that circumstance. But I understand if you don't want to talk about such a painful experience. I mean, I can't blame your curiosity. Meanwhile, Batman scours Gotham City in hopes of finding Mr. Freeze once again. Despite the earlier event, Lucknow seems to be on his side as Batman spots Mr. Freeze's van from the rooftop of a building by the highway. Batman quickly reacts by pressing the remote beacon sending the Batmobile speeding swiftly to the street down below. Batman promptly launches off to the rooftop and lands into the open cockpit of the Batmobile. It zooms off to tail Freeze's van. Okay, so get this, right? Frankie drops the bottle, right? Then it shatters into like a million pieces. Oh man, you should have seen the look on Falcone's face. Huh? Batman launches a grappling hook from the Batmobile and it grips onto the back of the van. Ah, great! I thought we just left this nightmare! Mr. Freeze opens up the van doors and aims his freeze ray out at the grappling hook. With a burst of ice, the grappling hook snaps off. The Batmobile shakes a little at the sudden snapping of the wire, but still remains on course. 
A goon lets loose a magazine of ammo onto the Batmobile, but the bullets only ricochet off in multiple directions. This guy's nuts! Lose him, Johnny! Trying over here! The van takes a sharp screeching left turn suddenly, the driver hoping to throw off Batman. The Batmobile has no trouble making the turn, however, as it continues to speed after them. Come on, come on! Mr. Freeze's brain works the problem rapidly and finds a solution. Mr. Freeze points his freeze ray outside, but this time at the front of the van. Wait, what are you doing, sir? Just keep driving. With a pull of the trigger, an ice ramp forms in front of the van. It drives up as fast as possible, already beginning to crack from the weight. Batman decides to take a risk and follow after the van. Unfortunately for him, the weight is too much, and the Batmobile tumbles down back to the street. Ha ha ha! See ya, freak! Damn it! He escaped. Batman fires a drone from the back of the Batmobile to trail Mr. Freeze discreetly. Batman notices the bat signal off in the distance and drives off to presumably meet Commissioner Gordon. Robin, how are you feeling? I think I'm all good now. Glad to hear. Meet me at the GCPD. Will do. At the chilling lair of Mr. Freeze, his van zooms into the now open garage and halts. Mr. Freeze and his crew exit and head into the cold. Huntington's disease? Yes, it's a disease that slowly eats away at the brain cells. We've caught it fairly early, as her symptoms aren't too severe. We can begin treatment to lessen the blow of it, but there's still no cure. What does the therapy entail? We have physical therapy, programs to manage diet, as well as some medications, but like I said, it cannot cure the disease. Are there any trials being done that we can get her in? Well, not currently. The drugs are still too experimental. But if there's a chance that she'll be cured, it's worth it. Isn't it? I don't know. I've heard that these things can have bad side effects, especially with trials. But my love, you could make it through this. I'll do the treatments, but I don't want this to spiral out of control. I don't want your last moments with me. I'll fix this. I promise you, my love. I'll cure you myself. Victor Freeze and his tear-stained Nora exit the doctor's office. Months later, Victor and Nora enter his laboratory. A pristine white space with many beakers, buns and burners, labeled bottles of chemicals, and other needed chemistry equipment. Victor has set up a glass tube with cryogenic capabilities in the center of the room. You're sure this'll work? I'll be frozen, but alive? You'll be safe in there, Nora. While you're in there, the disease won't progress, and I'll be able to cure you. If anyone else came up with this idea, I wouldn't trust them. You're not someone else, though. I love you, Victor. I love you too, Nora. I love you so much. Hold on to this for me. Let it give you strength. Nora unclasps a silver necklace from around her neck and puts it into Victor's hand. Victor looks down at it. It's a necklace he gave Nora on the anniversary. A snowflake. A small tear slides down Victor's cheek, but Nora wipes it away. We'll see each other soon. Nora walks into the cryo chamber and Victor seals it behind her. She lightly presses her hand against the glass and Victor does the same. He flips a switch on the panel next to the chamber and the freezing process begins. The chamber quickly fills with ice crystals and Nora turns pale. Suddenly, a pipe on the side of the tube bursts and hits Victor head on. Mr. Freeze puts Nora's necklace back in his pocket and continues to research a cure. He experiments with a few different elements, whips up a new formula, and prepares a slide with diseased blood to see if he's successful. He carefully drops a bit of the possible cure onto the slide and quickly puts it under a microscope. The substance begins to react to the blood, harming the disease at first. Mr. Freeze feels something he hasn't felt in a while, hope. His hope wasn't well-founded, though. The substance begins to fall apart and the disease returns. I need more! 
The diamond won't be enough. Uh, is this a bad time, sir? What do you want? Well, uh, sir, I got this little tip. See, there's, uh, these armored trucks filled with cash headed for the bank. You see, I figured we could maybe take them for ourselves with that little freeze ray of yours. And where did you get this little tip from? Friend of mine's working for the bank. He passed it along to me. Don't worry, sir, I trust him. Why is he trustworthy? He got into those banks two months ago. He's the guy I introduced you to that got us all that gear. And why should I trust you? Uh, well, sir, we've been working together for a little while now, right? I mean, I was the one who got you the info on the bank, and that worked out. Well, you do have a point. Fine. We'll go with your tip. You will not regret this, sir. If I do... You will too. On top of the GCPD building, Commissioner Gordon has gathered his most trusted officers. Harvey Bullock, Rene Montoya, and Crispus Allen. They are currently standing around, waiting for Batman. When's the freak getting here? Isn't this a time-sensitive operation? We'll get him up to speed when he arrives. Crispus, what's the word on Mr. Freeze? Well... I dropped out the information with my guy, Commish, so Free should have the word by now on the convoy. Good. We're gonna want all hands on deck for this operation. Are we leading an assault on Freeze's hideout? It's too risky. I have formulated a better plan. Alright, what's the play, Commish? The convoy's traveling down Moore Street in Diamond District. Its final destination is Gotham's second national bank. We'll have officers waiting out of sight in the side streets along the way. Montoya and Allen, you'll be in the squad car on Elder Drive leading the side attack. I'll lead the blockade squadron. We'll set up as fast as possible. So we'll surround him. Uh, what about his ice ray? Yeah, you know she's right. I don't want to be caught in the crossfire of that thing. Batman and Robin will have to take down Freeze before we surround the van. Does that work with you? Agreed. Jeez! Has he been there the whole time? Yeah, why does he always have to sneak up on us like that, Gordon? It's kind of his thing. Everyone understand the plan? Roger. Yeah, I got it. Yes, but the recent events have made me... suspicious. How so? Why all of a sudden, we have two villains resurface in Gotham? It's unclear why, but whatever the reason is, it can't be good. With that, Batman and Robin glide away from the scene. Batman's already formatting a plan on how to take out Mr. Freeze. On the street below, Barbara Gordon, phone in hand, heads over to the GCPD building to visit and talk with her dad. She looks up at the roof just in time to see Batman and Robin. Whoa. Batman and Robin. I wonder where they're going. Without a second thought, Barbara pockets her phone and races after them as Batman and Robin hop from building to building. Barbara runs as fast as she can, wanting to still keep the two heroes in sight. Batman and Robin are too quick, however, and seem to have given Barbara the slip. She desperately cranes around, hoping she can catch one more glimpse or sign to get her back on the trail. But it looks as though they're too far gone. Damn it. Disheartened, Barbara begins to make her way back to the GCPD building, giving up on the chance to see Batman and Robin. Before she gets too far away, Robin lands behind her. Barbara wheels around when she hears the thud of boots on concrete. Hi, Miss Gordon. Oh, hello, Robin. Were you following us? Oh, uh, yes. I just wanted to thank you two for saving me the other day. Just doing our job, Miss Gordon. If you need us, we'll be there. Well, not just you specifically, but all of the people of Gotham in need. Robin's about to grapple away, but... So, what's going on? Has Joker broken out again? No faith in Gotham's penitentiary system? It's not that. He's just really crafty. And creepy. <sighs> he sure is. But no, he's still locked up in Arkham. Mr. Freeze, however, is another story. He's back in Gotham. In that case, I better get back inside. Good luck, Robin. Thanks, Miss Gordon. Barbara watches as Robin disappears fast in the rooftops for a moment, before heading back on her way. Back in Mr. Freeze's lair, he takes the intel the goon grabbed from Crispus Allen and begins to devise a plan. He quickly explains how they are going to lead a three-pronged attack, and how he will be taking the convoy from the rear himself. All of the goons seem to understand, and they all begin preparing. 
While the goons are off checking their weapons, Mr. Freeze pays Nora another visit in his lab. I love you more than you can imagine, Nora. I've done a lot of bad, but I want to do good by you. Once you're cured, we'll start over. This will hopefully be it, my darling. My last heist. Goodbye for now. Barbara dear, I want you to stay right here, okay? This is the safest place you can be. Why? Do you think things will go out of hand? No, but you can never be too careful. I don't want you on the streets right now. Sure, Dad. I'll stay here. You better be careful too, alright? Of course. Commissioner Gordon gives his daughter a tender hug and then grabs his gear off of his desk and heads out. Wheels up in five, everyone. The convoy will be on Moore Street in 15 minutes. You got it, Commissioner. The police rush into their positions and wait as patiently as possible for the convoy. This is Gordon. What's your ETA? Over. We're about five minutes from Moore Street. Over. Any signs of trouble yet? Over. None that I can... Wait a minute. The armored car driver takes a look in his rearview mirror and notices a horrible sight in the near distance. Mr. Freeze's van. You've got trouble, sir. Looks like Freeze is here. Possibly trying to get the jump on us earlier than we expected. Over. Can you make it to more? Over. We'll try our best, sir. But any backup you could spare would be ideal, sir. Over. Copy that. Over and out. Freeze is bound to have more than just that van. Officers, we're staying in position. Get ready for a sudden attack, though. Batman, do you read me? Yes, Commissioner. Do you think you can take care of that van? Over. We'll do, Commissioner. Over and out. Robin? Stay here with the rest of the police. I'll handle the van. Got it, Batman. The Batmobile races after the van, taking a side street to hopefully get the jump on it. A white van steadily gets closer to the armored car in the back of the convoy. Mr. Freeze hangs out of the window and points his freeze gun at the truck. Oh, crap. Brace for impact, Rogers. Keep it steady. I have a clean shot. Mr. Freeze squeezes the trigger at what he thinks is the perfect time, but he is sorely mistaken. The Batmobile slams right into Freezer's van, nearly sending it crashing into a near building. Oh, not the bat again! It's time to end this. Get as close to the armored truck as you can. Yes, sir. The van swiftly reaches the back truck, and Mr. Freeze opens the passenger van door. Hey, sir, what are you doing? Just drive. Ah, I knew I should have gone with Frankie. Batman shoots out one of Freezer's van's tires, and it swerves out of control. Ah, crap. Batman opens the Batmobile's cockpit and launches out to join Freeze on the armored truck's roof. Batman, once again you're in the way of my plans. It's time for that to no longer be possible. Freeze fires a chilling blast at Batman, but Batman was ready. He rolls out of the way and rapidly throws a Batarang as a counterattack. The metal Batarang ricochets off of Freeze's suit, however. Mr. Freeze hits Batman in the leg with a Freeze Blast before he can react. Batman speedily reaches down on his belt before it's too late, grabs his thermal heating discs, and tosses one on his leg just before Freeze fires another shot. Batman dodges it just in time. He tosses two spare thermal discs onto Freeze. Ah! Mr. Freeze flings off the discs as fast as he can, but Batman's already one step ahead of him. Batman tosses bolus at Freeze and they wrap around him with haste. Mr. Freeze tries to break out of them with all of his might, but it isn't enough. The steel ropes don't budge. All I wanted to do was cure my dear Nora. I just needed the money for her. That's all. I know, Victor, but this isn't the way. Call all of this off. And I'll get you help with Nora. This is Freeze. The operation's over. Hand yourselves over to the police. Like hell I'm doing that! The goon races out of his hiding spot, believing he can make it out of the area before the police get him. He was wrong. The blockade pops out without warning, leaving him with no chance to escape. Ah! Dang it! Stay where you are, if you know it's good for you. The armored truck drives up to drop off Mr. Freeze and Batman to Commissioner Gordon. Freeze is taken into custody by Alan and Montoya. Good work today, Batman. 
I told Freeze that I'd arrange for him to help curing Nora. We'll work on a specialized area in Blockade for him then, but it'll take some time. I might be able to help with that. Dr. Crane, what are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here for Victor. Our facilities at Arkham can house him while he works on his cure. We believe that allowing him to cure his wife will benefit his mental stability and put him on a better path. Is that so? We've done a lot of research on the subject, yes, so uh, may I take him with me or do I need another signature from Mayor Hill? Fine, but I'll be sending some of my officers to inspect Arkham to make sure everything's up to code. Wouldn't have it any other way. We'll have a refrigerated cell prepared for him. All we need now is for you to drop him off. You heard him, boys. Load him up in the van and ship him up to Arkham. Alan, go with them, please. Yes, sir, Gordon. Man, <laughs> I should have worn my heavier jacket. I'm chilled. I'm sure we'll see each other very soon, Batman, Robin, Commissioner. I'm sure. There's something off about Crane. He just rubs me the wrong way. You're not the only one. I'll look into it. At Arkham Asylum, Mr. Freeze is led into his new cell, which has supplies for him to begin research on a cure for Nora. The door slams shut behind him and is locked tightly. Mr. Freeze admires his new working space and enjoys the temperature of the room, set to only comfort him. However, he's not alone as a man steps out of the shadows. Welcome to your new home, Frosty. Joker. Let's have a little chat, shall we? He's Mr. White Christmas. He's Mr. Snow. He's Mr. Icicle. He's Mr. Ten Below. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!